J4 coefficient of restitution. Now we've looked at cases where we have assumed the perfect bounces off the floor with a ball, rubber ball bouncing. In fact, the super ball is one that bounces quite, quite high. But we're gonna find here, defined a coefficient that's now realistic. So before we get to that, let's look at dropping a ball before it hits the ground. If you drop a ball, then the kinetic energy plus the potential at the beginning is equal to the kinetic plus the potential at the end, which is down here. So we're gonna start here and end up down there. Kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy is mg, and we'll call this capital H. And then at the bottom, you have one half mu squared. That's the speed, it's called that speed down at the bottom. And the potential energy then is zero. That's our reference down at the bottom there. So we have here one half mu squared is mgh. The m's cancel and we get u squared is 2gh and we get u is the square root of 2gh. That's what we get. Now, if the ball has a perfect bounce, it'll go right back up to h because then u down here, which is traveling down, is going to turn around. It's going to bounce up and then have u you know, going up like that. But what's gonna happen in real life is that if you drop a ball from height H, you know, we're down here, you have U right before the collision and bounce, go back up. When it goes back up, it goes back up with V and it doesn't go up to the top, it stops at some height H. So if we do this problem again, where the kinetic energy is one half MV squared, you know, going up, and it's gonna to rise to an mg little h, then you basically have the same equation here now with v, 2g little h. And since the v is less than u, your height is gonna be less than the initial one that you started out with. So the coefficient of restitution is defined by definition with a little e, and I'll put down three, like the equal sign to the three, it's the velocity after the bounce compared to the velocity before the bounce. And see, this is going to be less than one. You're not gonna be able to get a perfect bounce. Now, this formula can be generalized to collisions where you have both masses moving. And in that case, the formula is given like this. And this is the ratio of the velocity of separation over the velocity of approach. So in this particular case, you can think of having a ball and having the mass of Earth. So when the ball's coming down to hit the Earth, then the Earth doesn't move and the ball bounces back. And if it's perfectly elastic and you, you don't lose any energy, kinetic energy, then this E coefficient of restitution is one. But that's not, that's not the case. I mean, it's not gonna be the case in real life. So here, if you relate to our previous problems with collisions, and this is mass two, the ball coming in, and here, this is the velocity of the Earth is zero, and the velocity of the ball, if up is positive, then this is say some minus u, where you know, u is a positive 
value, so the minus sign is now out in front, so this is a negative. Then the velocity of approach here would simply be u1 minus u2 minus minus, it's gonna be u. So it's gonna be the velocity of approach is going to be simply u. And then the velocity of separation the, the mass of the Earth is not going to move. It's going to be zero. And then here, if you let this be V, the mass two going back up, it's going to be V. You're going to have this relationship that we defined here with one mass being stationary like the Earth. So. Okay, now what about the experiment that we can do? very, very interesting experiment we can do is that we can write down this definition and then use these formulas here that we already figured out, the U and the V, and you're gonna get the square root of two G little h divided by the square root of two G big H, and you're gonna get the square root of the ratio of the heights. In other words, you can measure, this is, and this is easy to measure in a lab, say, uh, velocities are hard, but you can say, look at this, I'm gonna drop this from a, a height h, and then when it bounces, I'm gonna measure how high it goes up. It's a little tricky to do that when it's in motion like that. Uh, maybe you can take a little video or something and have a ruler in the back. And then you can take the ratio and take the square root and you get the coefficient of restitution. So here's the table to give us uh, some definitions, a summary. The coefficient of, of restitution is one in the elastic collision, and we've been approximating, using that approximation in some of our ideal formulas. And we can also call that perfectly elastic, drop in an ideal super ball, for example. or with the pool balls, you know, one hits the other one, stops and goes off with the velocity almost the same. Then if you're between zero and one, you have an inelastic collision, also called a plastic collision, dropping the real balls. And if the coefficient of zero, that's like no bounce, it sticks to it. They stick together. Now we saw that with the ice skaters perfectly inelastic, also called perfectly plastic. Dropping mashed potatoes on the floor would be another example of perfectly plastic, perfectly inelastic collision. And when we did the skaters, we found that the kinetic energy after over the kinetic energy before was given by the mass of the moving skater divided by the sum of the masses Second, second one was at rest, and then they moved together, and that was the, the ratio. And if the mass of the second one goes to infinity, then you get zero. And that would be like dropping the mashed potatoes, for example, on the floor. The earth doesn't, doesn't move.